Imagine, if you will, a time far removed from our own, an era where the footprints of giants etched the earth and their shadows loomed large over the valleys and mountains of the ancient Near East. These were the Rephaim, a people shrouded in the mists of time, emerging from the pages of history with a presence both awe-inspiring and formidable. Many have heard of the Nephilim, yet very few are acquainted with the Rephaim, equally mysterious and significant in biblical scripture. The Old Testament, a tapestry rich with historical accounts of prophets, men of God, angels, cities, nations, kingdoms, rulers, kings, faith, struggle, and divine intervention, mentions the Rephaim time and again. They are not merely footnotes in biblical history, but pivotal characters in the unfolding drama of God's interaction with humanity. From the battlefields of Genesis to the prophetic visions of Isaiah, the Rephaim stand as towering figures both literally and metaphorically. As we delve into the scriptures, we find these giants in the land, the Rephaim, in eight distinct passages, each echoing their legacy and impact. Their presence is felt in the clash of kingdoms, the whispers of prophecy, and the unfolding plan of a God who works through and beyond the extraordinary. But what do these ancient giants mean for us today? How do their stories resonate with our faith journey? As we explore these questions, we uncover layers of meaning, drawing connections between past and present, the seen and the unseen, the physical and the spiritual. Let us then journey together, with hearts open and minds attuned, as we explore the mystery and the allure of the Rephaim. Genesis 15.20 And the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Rephaims 2 Samuel 5.18 the Philistines also came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim, 2 Samuel 5.22. And the Philistines came up yet again and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim, 2 Samuel 23.13. And three of the thirty chief went down and came to David in the harvest time unto the cave of Adullam, and the troop of the Philistines pitched in the valley of Rephaim. 1 Chronicles 11.15. Now three of the thirty captains went down to the rock to David, into the cave of Adullam, and the host of the Philistines encamped in the valley of Rephaim. 1 Chronicles 14.9 And the Philistines came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. Who were the Rephaim? Are they worse than the Nephilim? Job 26 verse 5 Dead things are formed from under the waters, and the inhabitants thereof. Dead things, departed spirit beings. Rephaim are formed from under the waters, and the inhabitants thereof. What are the Rephaim? Who are the Rephaim? Where do they come from? What is their origin? What are these spirit beings? Dead things are formed from under the waters, and the inhabitants thereof. Rephaim Isaiah 26 verse 14 They are dead, they shall not live, they are deceased, they shall not rise. Therefore hast thou visited and destroyed them, and made all their memory to perish. The phrase, they are dead, is the word Rephaim. Who are these beings that keep coming up again and again in the Bible? Who are these beings that are rarely ever mentioned? From a biblical perspective, the quest to uncover archaeological evidence for the Rephaim is a journey that intertwines history, scripture, and ancient culture. The lands of the Near East, which today include Israel, Jordan, and Syria, have been central to this exploration. Ancient inscriptions and texts unearthed in these regions often echo the biblical narrative, mentioning groups akin to the Rephaim. These findings suggest that the concept of a formidable race 
often described as giants, was not only prevalent in the biblical account but also resonated within the lore and culture of these ancient civilizations. Intriguingly, large and elaborate burial sites discovered in these areas have led some to speculate about a potential connection to the Rephaim. While direct evidence to solidify this link is yet to be found, the possibility adds a layer of depth to our understanding of these biblical figures. Moreover, artifacts such as sculptures and carvings, which depict unusually large human figures, have been considered by some scholars as representations of the Rephaim. In summary, the archaeological pursuit for evidence of the Rephaim remains a captivating aspect of biblical scholarship, inviting us to explore the confluence of scripture, history, and ancient civilization in our quest to understand these enigmatic figures of the biblical past. There are several passages in the Hebrew Bible that talks about the Rephaim. In virtually all the places they are mentioned in scripture, they are referred to as giants. The word Rephaim is literally interpreted as terrible ones. They are described in scriptures as mighty human-like creatures that threatened the existence of humans. Other humans looked inferior to them because of their stature and strength. Although in Hebrew, the word Rephaim has two distinct meanings. First, it is a term used to describe the spirits of the departed dead who dwelt in Sheol. It is figuratively used to describe a ghost. The second interpretation of the word Rephaim is a literal meaning which describes them as tall, strong and powerful creatures who lived in the land of Canaan. The word Rephaim is not the description of an ethnic group, rather it is the common characteristic that the people of a particular land shared. These people are usually abnormal in size and scary to relate with. The word Rephaim was first mentioned in Genesis 14 verse 5 when King Kedorlaomer defeated them alongside with the Zumims and the Emims. Genesis 14 verse 1 to 6 And it came to pass in the days of Amraphel, king of Shinar, Arioch, king of Elisar, Kedor Leoma, king of Elam, and Tido, king of nations, that they made war with Bera, king of Sodom, Bersha, king of Gomorrah, Shinab, king of Admah, Shemeber, king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, that is Zoar. All these joined together in the valley of Sidim, that is the salt sea. Twelve years they served Kedolioma, and in the thirteenth year they rebelled. In the fourteenth year Kedolioma and the kings that were with him came and attacked the Rephaim in Ashtaroth Karnaim, the Zuzim in Ham, the Amim in Shaveh Kiriathaim, and the Horites in their mountain of Seir, as far as El Paran, which is by the wilderness. The Rephaim were mentioned once again when the Israelites were to take over the land of the Canaanites. They drew back because they saw giants in the land of Canaan. Numbers 13 verse 32 and 33 says, And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature and there we saw the giants the son of an ark which come of the giants and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers and so we were in their sight in Genesis 6 verse 1 to 4 where the word Nephilim was first mentioned they are seen as the offspring of fallen angels and daughters of men they were giants of those days and the Bible says that they lived before and after the flood. In those days giants were scattered in the land of Canaan and were called different names. Deuteronomy 2 verse 20 and 21 give an apt description of the Rephaim. They were likened to giants such as the Anakims, that also was accounted a land of giants. Giants dwelt therein in old time, 
and the Ammonites called them Zamzumims, a people great and many and tall as the Anakims. But the Lord destroyed them before them, and they succeeded them and dwelt in their stead. The succeeding chapter talks about the last of the Rephaim, Og of Bashan, who was killed by the Israelite armies. According to Deuteronomy 3 verse 11, the bed of Og was 13 feet long and 6 feet wide. This king must have been huge for the Bible to have recorded such detail about him. Both in ancient folklore and in many cultures, giants form a significant part of history. The ancient Jews believed that the Rephaim were giants because the Greek word Titanis, from which the English word Titan is derived, was used to translate it. The Bible does not mention anything about demigods, and allow me to make this crystal clear. There is no such thing as demigods within the Bible. However, some people have pointed to the reality of the Nephilim and Rephaim being the origin of many mythologies and legends we see in the world today. These Nephilim are described as being the mighty men who were of old, the men of renown. Perhaps the demigods of, for example, Greek mythology. However, this is mere speculation. While the Nephilim and the Rephim are both mentioned as giant beings in the Bible, significant differences distinguish them, adding layers to our understanding of these mysterious figures. The Nephilim, first mentioned in Genesis 6-1-4, are often described as the offspring of the sons of God, commonly believed to be angels and the daughters of men. This union is believed to have produced a race of giants known for their formidable size and strength. The Nephilim are depicted as mighty warriors of old, men of renown, whose presence before and after the flood indicates their significant impact on early human history. In contrast, the Rephaim, while also referred to as giants, have a more varied depiction in the biblical narrative. Their name, often translated as Terrible Ones, suggests an aura of awe and fear surrounding their existence. Unlike the Nephilim, the Rephaim are not explicitly described as the product of a union between divine beings and humans. Instead, their narrative is more grounded in the earthly realms of Canaan and the Transjordan, where they were known as formidable warriors and inhabitants of the land before the Israelite conquest. The Rephaim's dual nature in biblical texts, as both physical giants and spirits of the dead in Sheol, adds to their mysterious persona. This duality hints at a complex cultural and theological significance that stretches beyond their physical description. While the Nephilim's origins are linked to the divine realm, suggesting a breach of the natural order and divine human boundaries, the Rephaim are more deeply rooted in the human world, intertwined with the history and battles of ancient nations. The Rephaim's connection to Sheol the abode of the dead and their mention in contexts of mourning and afterlife beliefs further differentiate them from the Nephilim, whose legacy is primarily associated with their physical prowess and the antediluvian world. One thing we do know is that the Nephilim are real, and the Rephaim are also real.